assholes with opinions. Yo, Gonzo. Yo. Do you know how to intimidate people? No. You don't? No. You just gotta give them the lazy eye! <laughs> <laughs> EWO show, baby, for life. For life, for life. For life, baby. What's up, everybody? It's a Splatman here with another edition of the AWO show, Assholes with Opinions. We're just a couple of assholes giving you our opinions. We're covering another top five video for you today, The Forgotten Five. Another top five movies because we forgot a whole shitload in... Myself, the Splat Man, I, I, I feel like I fucked up on it. I feel like I had another top five movie, so we're gonna do a top five number two, The Forgotten Five. I got my main man, a brother from another mother, the man with the beard, Gonzo Shark, buddy. What up? What up, bro? Not How too much, man. I'm doing, I'm doing long, long day at work, hot day. But, Hot day is right, bro. Holy fuck, shit. Yeah, and tomorrow's going to be even hotter. It sucks. I, I like it. I like it. But, I'm going um, to stay for the summer will last, bro. No, nah, I hear you because, dude, the summer flies by. Yeah, it, it, seems like, it seems like the winter is so slow, but the summer just flies yep. right by. Yep, yep. But uh, let's get this started, bro. I'm going to start off with this. Wait, one, wait, bro. wait, wait. Before you go, let me just say I didn't fuck up my list. Okay. Hey, well, wait, 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 wait. Let me just say this. I didn't fuck up my list either. But you just you said you said you, right. you said you felt like you fucked up. I felt like I did, all right, but I didn't. All right, folks. All right, Go. all right, all right. So anyway, my my top five that I did before was pretty much on point. So these the ones that I name are just ones that I didn't even think of when I was coming up with the list. And then after the fact, I was like, how the fuck did I not think of these? So these are just five forgotten gems for me. That's it. But start it off, Splat Man. Start it off. I didn't mean to fuck up your flow. No, you didn't. You never fuck up my flow, bro. All right, good. All right. So, start it off at number five. My number five, number two. I'm going to call my number five, number two, because this is list number two. Uh, number five, it's a cartoon. It's, uh, it's just so fucking awesome. Even when I watch it when I'm, now that I'm older, it's awesome. My son loves it. Fucking five will goes west. I love uh, that. That's where the whole let's give him the lazy eye comes from. So Wiley Burp, Tiger, Five will, such a great movie. Such a great family movie. Just sit home on your couch and watch an old school great family movie that just is just has a great story to it. Wicked fun. The animation's great. Good story. I already said that. But yeah, that's my number five. Dude, it's funny that you said that because, well, first of all, let me say that I love that movie when I was a kid. Great movie. I haven't seen it in years, but it was great. But it's funny because when the day we did the top five list, you said Five Will Goes West to me, and then you never said it when, when you had your list. I know, because I actually, I, I thought about it, and my other list had Toy Story, yeah. and it had Lion King, and like I love those movies, but I kind of picked those movies a little bit because they were on the popular side, more of a range of people probably would have, wouldn't would know what i'm talking about but i gotta stay true to myself stay true to everybody and if i could do that list over again i'd put five oh five goes west in that spot but it's my number five spot for today all what's right what's your number five all right let's get over my number five what's your all right. all right my number five uh is uh a really fucked up movie and it's one that you know a lot of people I mean, it's a take it or leave it. I love it, but some people don't. Um, but it's from Rob Zombie, his second movie, 2005, The Devil's Rejects. I remember when his first movie, House of a Thousand Corpses, was coming out. I saw like the a little clip in the previews of a movie like a year before it came out or two years before it came out. And I'm like, what? Rob Zombie's coming out with a movie, dude. So I waited and waited and waited for that to come out and... You know, it just didn't disappoint. But I feel like with The Devil's Rejects, Rob Zombie kind of, I mean, that's really where I felt like you got to see him shine as a filmmaker. 
Like the first movie was kind of choppy and rough and you could tell he just kind of went all out and it was totally out there. Um, but like this movie I felt like was more of a cinematic piece. You know what I mean? He really took the time to pick the right shots. It was a great, great dialogue in the movie. You know, the script was awesome and it's just a really fucked up movie and you've seen it, right? Yeah, of course. And what wicked, do you wicked cool wicked cool characters, you know? Yeah, dude. The clown, the clown guy, the girl, she's sick and twisted. The, the both of them, House of a Thousand Corpses, in this one, The Devil's Rejects. They're both kind of like they were great movies. They're kind of like sick and twisted. Of course, oh, they're yeah. gonna be like they kind of made me uncomfortable a little bit watching them, you know. <laughs> but oh, yeah, and uh, that's, that's the thing. I mean, it, like I showed Devil's Rejects to my girl and House of a Thousand Corpses to her. And she, I'm pretty sure she said she thought House of a Thousand Corpses was more scary. Um, but The Devil's Rejects, like, after, like, she didn't even like it. She was just like, she's like, this movie's not even scary. It's just, like, people getting killed. Well, yeah, and, like, it, the second one was more of a story. The first yeah. one was more of, like, a like a classic horror yeah. film, you know, death yep. scenes after death scenes, you know. But I honestly, I, I agree with your girlfriend. I was more... Like it felt more scared during the first one than the second one. It was more of a a scary movie, you know, to me the first one. I just thought like it was just the, what the people were going through, the creepy family, all that shit. Just yeah, yeah, I I agree. I mean, I, honestly, neither one of those movies scared me. You know what well, I mean? They, like, it, well, I I didn't know what kind of word to put it there, but not not many movies scare me at all. Yeah, I'm the same you know, way, but the, I know the, what you're saying. Yeah, so. And, and I agree. I think the first one would easily creep people out a lot more than the second one. The second one is just more of a shocker. Like, what the fuck is going on? But if you haven't seen that movie, check it out. And if you have seen the two first two Rob Zombie movies, drop a comment. Let me know what you think, because I'm always curious to hear what people think about those movies. But let's let's move, keep it rolling. What do you got for number four? Number four was probably the, you know, the toughest one on my second list here. Um, I had I had two of them there, but you told me I couldn't cheat, so I'm not gonna cheat. Don't fucking cheat, bro. Come on, put it. 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 Even uh, this old movie he did, I think, called uh, Rubberneck'er. Oh, and Rubber! Ne I remember that. Yeah, it's such a such an old. What What about Once Bitten, bro? Yeah, the vampire one. That was good too. That yep. was really young. I think Rubberneck'er was his first film. Yeah, so, it was. It was. It's, it's a stupid movie, but it's great. Jim Carrey. Yeah, Truman Show was great. Um, you know, I expected it. When I was younger, I expected it to be wicked funny, you know, comedy show, which it, comedy movie, which it is. It is funny. It's got some really funny parts, but it gets really serious, and that's what I love about it. I think it shows Jim Carrey's range as an actor, where he can go from, you know, funny goofball to serious, you know, and life and death situations and shit like that, and like just the whole character of the Truman Show is just great to to watch this guy and just I thought it was I thought it was excellent. I thought it was great actors. Um, yeah, all in all, it was great. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I've never seen that movie. Well, dude, you have to watch The Truman Show because I feel like it doesn't get as much credit as it, it should. Like, honestly, it is a great, great film. And like I said, in that time of Jim Carrey, I think it was before he did Man on the Moon. Yeah. Uh, so it was that that came out like right after Liar Liar right around that time, like between Liar Liar and Man on the Moon. But the thing is, too, is, man, I was I followed Jim Carrey movies when I was a kid, you know, when Dumb Dumber, Liar Liar, when all those were coming out. And he was, like, my favorite, dude. I, like, idolized that guy. I loved him. And Ace Ventura's, too, those as well. And then The Truman Show came out, dude. And I remember I tried to watch that when I was younger, like, around the time it came out. And that was a movie that got me. Like, I did not understand that at all. I just shut it off. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck's going on. I was expect. I think I was expecting another Liar Liar type of movie or another Ace Ventura type of movie. And when I didn't get that, I was just like, I don't even want to watch this. And I've never watched it. And Scott, who is a very good friend of ours, also told me, like, a year ago, you have to watch that movie. 
He's like, I can't believe you've never seen that movie. You have to watch that fucking movie. It's on Netflix. I just haven't watched it yet. But dude, yeah, that's that's kind of how I started. Like I when when the when the Truman Show first came out, I wanted nothing to do with it because I, I watched a little bit of it and it it just it it wasn't like a Jim Carrey movie. But as I got older, you know, I I watched it more and more and I respected it more and just became what it grew and grew become one of my favorites. I just like I said, you didn't expect it from Jim Carrey. You got to see his range as an actor. The whole movie was great. So if you haven't checked it out, you know, The Truman Show is a good movie to watch. Definitely uh, definitely a, a life lesson, I guess. You can look at the, the world differently. You can look at life differently by the end of this movie. But check it out. And Gonzo, finish watching the movie. You got you to gotta see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch it because I, I, every Jim Carrey movie I should see. Yeah, if there's one that I haven't seen, I should see it. So I'm going to watch it. I just have to actually fucking watch it. You know what I'm saying? But it's on Netflix, so maybe I'll put that at the top of my list. Um, I'm going to move on to my number four, which I like your number four, though. It's a good choice because that was one that I haven't seen, so that's cool. Um, my number four, I'm going to guess that maybe this is a movie that you haven't seen. Um, and actually, like a lot of people, I feel like, haven't seen this movie. The older generation, like our parents, probably know this movie. Um, but it's a great movie. It's based on a true story. And it is 100% one of those hidden gems. It's one of those movies where um, a lot of people just haven't seen it. A lot of people haven't even heard of it, okay? Uh, and for the actors that are in it, it's surprising because it's got Christopher Walken, Sean Penn, uh, Chris Penn, his brother, who died. Um, and there's a couple other people that, like, you might know their faces or whatever. I don't remember their names, but they're pretty famous actors. Um and the name of the movie is At Close Range. And like I said, it's actually based on a true story. And it's really, I just, it's an unbelievable story. Just the, the story itself, I don't know why. I mean, it, it just kind of hit home for me. Uh, because my father actually is the one who told me about the movie. And you know the situation with my father. Like me and him haven't spoken in probably like seven or eight years. Um, so... I don't know if it, it, the, the story is about a father and his two sons. Christopher Walken's the father and Sean Penn and Chris Penn are his sons. So I don't know if maybe that's why the movie kind of has like a weird special place with me or whatever. Uh, but it's like Christopher Walken plays like this crime virtuoso. Like he's got a whole team, but they're really like low level type of guys. But they're smart. They know what they're doing. And they're not going after like these giant jobs or whatever. They just got like their little you know, smuggling ring thing going. They're dealing drugs. They're doing all kinds of shit. And Sean Penn is like a younger guy. He's probably only 20 in the movie or something like that. And he wants to, uh, you know, go to work for his father. You know, he wants to get into that or whatever. And, and his father, you know, basically lets him and his brother, you know, start doing crimes with them and stuff. Um, and I don't want to give anything away from the movie. It's one of those movies you just have to see it because of the way the story is. But it, it's the type of movie that'll blow your mind, and it's a hundred percent true story. And like you know, it's it just shocks me because I I mean a lot. There's probably people that'll see this and be like, dude, fucking at close range, one of the greatest movies ever. But then, the, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of people that are just gonna be like, what the fuck? I've never heard of that movie. Have you ever seen I, it? I've never seen it. No. Have you ever heard of it? I've heard of it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, someone was telling me about it. It might have been you. Oh, dude, it, it's. It was, it's a powerful movie, and actually, a little like fun fact about it: Madonna has a song. Um, it's called "Live to Tell." Came out in the eighties, and she made that song for that movie. So, and, and and it's one of those songs where, like, you know, if you've heard a lot of Madonna songs, you've definitely heard it, and you probably might have not known that it was for that soundtrack, like specifically made for that movie. So that's a little fun fact too. But yeah, dude, that's a great movie. That's one that you definitely have to check out. I will check that out because it sounds great. The actors and everything sounds awesome. Um, all right, to number three here. Number three. All right, number three is it might be a movie that you've you've never seen, um, but the actors in it is great. The movie it's great. Um, it's a movie that I used to watch with my father. We used to sit down on the couch anytime it was on. We would watch it. Uh, it came out in 1987, I think, 1986, 1987, I think 1987, 
Um, the movie is Untouchables. Ooh. So it's a really good, like, kind of like a gangster, you know, movie. It has well, Al, Kevin... Al Capone, right? Well, yeah, it's, it has Al Capone on it, who's, who's played by Robert De Niro, which is pretty sweet, you know. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty much based around Al Capone, and Kevin Costner's in it, and Sean Connery's in it, and it's pretty much the trial of Al Capone or something to do with that. Uh, it's just a, a great movie. Like, some of the best scenes are from that movie. Like, just one scene that sticks out for me is the end, the, the fine, like, a couple scenes, actually. One was when Robert De Niro, like, takes a bat to somebody at the table. Um, that was one, one, one scene that I'll never forget. And then another scene at the end is, like, a, a wicked famous scene with the baby carriage being dropped off of uh, the stairway and Kevin Costner's got to save the baby and kill a bunch of bad guys at the same time. But Untouchables, great movie, great actors. If you haven't seen it, watch it. I think it's one of those movies that don't get enough credit and it's not – it's not out there for people to, you know, regular people nowadays, kids and shit to see nowadays. Um, but uh, Kevin, have you seen that movie? Actually, no, I haven't. And Kevin Costner plays Elliot Ness, right? Isn't that isn't that the character he plays, Elliot Ness? Yeah, I think I think that's the character he plays. Yeah. Um, actually, you know, when I was because I mentioned that movie Heat, and you know, on one of the videos we did recently. And I was just like, what? I was after I watched Heat. I was looking for other like uh, good crime or mob movies, or say you know, trying to find ones that maybe I haven't seen. And that came up on a bunch of lists. And I'm like, oh yeah, I haven't seen that. Um, but there's one part where they show uh, Robert De Niro talking about how he wants Elliot Ness dead, and he's saying like, you know, I, I want him dead. I want his family dead. You know, I want to burn his house down. I want to piss on the ashes and shit. And I'm just like seeing that in the little clip. I'm like, oh my god. That's like Robert De Niro in prime form right there. Prime, yeah, prime form. But yeah, th I that's another one, dude, that I actually I have it like in my Netflix queue. Like I was planning on watching that soon, so it's funny that you brought it up. But yeah, I've never seen that, and I've heard from everybody that's a great movie. Yeah, it just started off like my dad absolutely loved that movie, and he made sure I watched it. And ever since I, he, I watched it with him that one time, like every time it's on, it's all, it's, I watch it, it's awesome. Um, I was always a Kevin Costner fan, and you can't go wrong with Robert De Niro, nope. especially playing Al Capone. That's that shit's awesome. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out. Another movie for you to watch. That's why we do these videos for you. So watch it, Untouchables. Yeah. All right. Um, hang on. I just had my honorable mentions. I just had two more pop in my head, so I got to write these down. That's what's so hard about doing movies because. There is so many, and like any time, they'll just pop in your head. Uh, we're fucking assholes for making a five list. We should have made it like a hundred list. Yeah, would have been here. No, you know what would have been smart was to say, okay, it's going to be the top fifty movies or top one hundred, but each one we do, okay, this is one through five. This is five through ten. Oh, we, you we, know, oh, we just went back and forth. I got 50. You got 49. Yeah, yeah. And and that's that's where we fucked up because if we would have done it like that, you know, it would have even given people a reason to be like, okay, you know, not that they don't have a reason now, but, like, it could have just hooked people that maybe have never watched one of our videos before. You know, they could be like, oh, well, you know, that was a pretty good video, and they're coming out with more. They already told me, so they check out other ones and they subscribe, you know, so that would be good. But whatever. We didn't do that. I'm sure we're going to end up coming out with, like, two more film fucking videos because – I just keep thinking of so many. Like I said before, they just keep coming in my head. Um, all yeah, right. and, if, and if, if you people have any ideas of what you guys want us to do, comment. Let us know. You know, what would you want to see? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, 100%. Because, you know, whatever. Sometimes A lot of times people come up with really good fucking topics that I'm like, wow, I never thought of that. Um, but, yeah, let us know in the comments. All was right, that, Ding Dong. Was that your number three? Yeah, my number three, Ding Dong. So it's your number three now. All right. All right, you fucking asshole. Um, all right, number three, number three, number three. Uh, this is a movie that the title of the movie, I remember when I was a little kid, man, I didn't even understand the title. I'm like, what the fuck? Or and it just threw me off. I'm like, what the fuck is that movie about? But I actually, I think I watched this movie for the first time when I was like 14 or 15. And I fell in love with it right off the first, right off the first time of watching it. It's a fucking great story. It's touching. 
You know what I mean? It's the type of story that'll move you. It's the type of story that might make you want to cry. Um, but it has Jack Nicholson in it, directed by Milos Foreman. It came out in 1975. And Milos Foreman's actually the same guy that directed Man on the Moon. So in that Jim and Andy thing, he was the director that that you saw in that because you said you watched Jim and Andy, right? Yeah, the director that had like an Italian accent. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. he's the guy that made this movie, um, 1975, and it's called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, have you ever seen it? Yeah, no. No, uh, you got to watch no, it. Bro. But, but dude, I, everybody, like it's like up there with like one of the greatest movies of all time, so... That's yeah, what I'm I, told. So I have to. It's one of those movies I have to watch. I I feel like I'm wicked slacking by saying I haven't seen that movie, but I'm pretty sure that it's it's in the first like, I think it might be in the on the AFI top 100 movies of all time list, which obviously is like, you know, kind of the in my opinion at least it's kind of the holy grail of movie lists when you think about it. Like if you're if it the real top 100 movies of all time. Look at the AFI list, because to me they don't really get it wrong. But the movies on that fucking list, ninety-five percent of them are like, I, I know it's a great movie. So, but yeah, I think it's in the top twenty on the AFI top one hundred. But uh, yeah, Jack Nicholson plays a guy that, um, I'm not sure how it happens, but he basically fakes that he's crazy, and he goes to a mental institution. And uh, there's, you know, this nurse there, her name's like Nurse Ratchet or something like that. And she's just the biggest bitch you've ever seen in your life. And the way she treats these people that have all these mental uh, problems and, and, you know, they're they're disabled in different ways or whatever. Um, and, you know, it's really good story because you really the characters in the movie you really get to know the characters. You know what I mean? Because Jack Nicholson, it's really focuses around his relationships and his interactions with all these people there and the nurse. And you really get to know all these characters very, very well. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. It's something that everybody should see. You know, it's even a movie that you could show to a younger, like, I, I think anybody under like 10 years old might not understand it. But, you know, if you're 12, 13 years old, you got a 13 year old kid. Uh, you could show it to them any day of the week. You know what I mean? It's a great story. I'm su- I wouldn't be surprised if some high schools require that to be viewed, or definitely it, col- college courses. Is it a book? I, honestly, I don't know if it's a book. I'm not sure. I I couldn't tell you. It might be based on a book. All right, but dude, well, I'm gonna check good. it out. Another one to write on my list to check out. Yeah, I have, a, I, have, I have a list of a thousand favorites and a list of a thousand movies I have to see. <laughs> that could be my favorites all right my number two moving on to number two this number two reminds me of my mom so much me and her she 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 got me into it and the movie is the labyrinth with david bowie Ooh. um the soundtrack is it's fucking awesome david bowie rest in peace brother i it's like one of the best artists is artist in my eyes ever yeah. Um, David Bowie sure. is the man and he's he plays the Goblin King in this movie and it's just a very like magical fantasy type movie um, this girl in the movie I forgot who plays her she's a famous actress I didn't do my homework I didn't find her name I didn't even look for her name I should know her name but I don't she uh, she has a little brother Toby and she has to watch it watch him and she's like sick of having a little brother and she wishes upon the goblin king to take her little brother and he does he the, his little goblins take the baby and they bring him to a magical land where she must go through the labyrinth to save her baby brother and uh the whole time she meets a whole bunch of like cool characters you know um ludo this big this big monster type guy who who gets a bad rep because he's big and scary but he's really kind and gentle you got hoggle he's wicked cool like I guess I want to call him a dwarf or something. I don't know, but he's just the characters are great. Uh, watch the movie. Have, haven't watched it. The Labyrinth. Great movie. Great story. Great fantasy story. David Bowie makes it awesome. Goblin King. Watch it. The Labyrinth. Number yeah. number two. Dude, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like that. That's one from when I, like, when I was a kid, bro. I used to love watching that movie. Loved it. I haven't watched that in years, but. It's that's one of those movies where it's just like it's it sucks you in and it's a really good story, you know, because it brings you to like another world, basically. 
You know, it does. And, it, it does, and every song in it is great. Like every song in the whole movie, you can dance to it, you can sing to it, you can cry to it. It's just all around. It's just a, a just a masterpiece in my eyes. Yeah, I, I would definitely, I would one hundred percent agree with that. One hundred percent. I love that movie, and that um, goes out to my mom because that's her favorite. That's my favorite. Love you, ma. <laughs> what up, Jeanette? How you doing? um all right so let let me move on to my number two and for me dude like it's to me it's like i don't think of this movie a lot uh when i think about my favorite movies because it's 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 like it's a given you know what i'm saying like it's like i don't even think about it because it's already like etched in stone it's a fucking given and for me and when i think about it when i think about uh like perfection in filmmaking to me this movie is like basically basically about as close as it gets you know what i'm saying and it's it might not this movie might not always make my top list or whatever because maybe it didn't impact me in like as much of an artistic way as a lot of other movies which i feel like that's why they're higher up on my list like a pulp fiction or clockwork orange or the big lebowski or any of those movies that they're, they're very much artistic in, in their own ways so because i related to that part of it so much those movies always kind of get like they kind of wash away this movie but the, like i said this is just etched in stone and and i surpass it all the time because like i said when i think about like what a movie is intended to do a movie is supposed to suck you in where you're, you're not thinking about anything else. You are in that, in that story, in that time, in that world of the movie. And to me, this is one of the, like almost perfection for, for that type of thing. When it comes to a movie, as far as sucking the audience in and just making you fall in love with the movie. And the movie came out in 1994, Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump, because it's just, I mean, bro, how could you go wrong with that movie? How could anybody ever go wrong with that movie? Bubblegum shrimp. <laughs> I mean, I mean, dude, like that, and that's another one where, man, you'll laugh, you'll get angry, you'll feel, you know, sad. Like, I mean, th that's a movie that even if I watch it now, sometimes I want to fucking tear up like a baby. You know what no, I mean? It, it, it's, 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 it's. Fucking Tom Hanks is awesome. Forrest Gump is awesome. The soundtrack is great. Great, you know. Dude. Just, just thinking of, every time I, every time I hear "Free Bird" by Leonard Skinner, I think about Forrest Gump. I think that's when, uh, what's his name and what's what's his girlfriend's name in that movie again? Jan, uh, Jan, right? Jan, Jan. That's when Jan's like she's getting on dancing. the bus. Yeah, no, she's. I think she's standing on the the ledge of the balcony. Oh, and she's thinking oh, about yes, jumping yes, off. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but like I, that's imprinted in my brain forever. So great pick, uh, Gonzo. I uh, one a couple of things that stick out to me in that movie too that I loved was the fact that how they stuck Forrest Gump in with like Richard Nixon and uh, yeah. Ronald Reagan and stuff. Yeah. You know, they 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 stuck him in these old time videos that are real. Yeah, and they put Forrest Gump in there and they made it look like he was there. That's and you know, it, that's why I, I, I loved about it. Yeah, That's why great. I feel like it's 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 near perfection when it comes to a to filmmaking it comes to a movie because the story of that movie is so epic and the 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 cinematography the the way they shot everything the the way that the movie makes you feel um, and then kind of how it just like goes through like almost his whole life and everything that he encounters in his life and it's like you know. Kudos to I, – I don't know if Robert Zemeckis wrote that. I know he directed it. I don't know if he wrote it. But, man, props to that guy for coming up with that story because, I mean, it's historical. You know, like you can learn something from that movie. You know what I yeah. mean? And, yeah, it, and like, has such, it has such a great message, everything like, about that movie. And like you said before, dude, earlier, you're like – it's like something you're like living in that moment. Like yeah. as you're watching that movie, you're going through his timeline and you're kind of living in that, that moment of, you know, his life, you know, and you're feeling for these characters, you feel for Forrest Gump, you feel for uh, Jan, right, Jan? Jan. Yeah.
yeah, you feel for Jan, you know, Forrest's mom and just how he's like, it's like a story of an underdog. Yeah. He was, he was, he was always, he was always a nobody. He was always like the underdog, you know, Forrest Gump. He was, you know, that weird boy down the street, you know? Yeah. And and it's like, you just mentioned about how Nixon and, uh, and, and Reagan or whatever. And then you think back to the beginning of the movie, he like meets Elvis. Yeah, he meets yeah, Elvis. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's just like the story is just unbelievable. And that, is, that's is. one that that's for anybody, I feel like. I mean, yeah, you might not want to show it to a five or a six-year-old because they might not get it. But uh, for the younger generation, I feel like it's a movie that can teach you a lesson. Just about life, about humility, about you know just the way you're supposed to treat other people. And the way you're supposed to live your life, like Forrest Gump, yeah, he might have been like slow, but he wasn't afraid to live his life. All right, it was was he slow or were we just fast? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but and 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 the movie's got one of the best quotes of all movies that will live forever. Yeah, you know the quote. Oh, of course I do. You want me to say it? You say it. It's your movie. All right. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Right? You never that- know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, dude it's unbel- it's such, man, that's, I mean, when I think about, like I said, perfe- like near perfection when it comes to filmmaking and then uh, just a feel good movie, feel good story. Yeah, there's parts in it that are sad, but I feel like at the end of it, like when, when it's all said and done, when the dust settles after the first time you watch that movie or even after the 50th time you watch that movie. Maybe later that day, maybe right after, maybe the next day. It's like a breath of fresh air. You know what I mean? It's just like it just brings you up. It, it just raises your spirits because yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. good. Yeah, a hundred percent right. It's it's got sad scenes in it, but like you said, it, it definitely by the end of the movie, it raises your spirits and you feel so happy after. Yeah, you know, and great movie, and that's what you need to feel in these movies. That's what makes them great. Yes. All right, all right. Let's move on to my number one. Number one. My number one, number two. That's what I'm going to call it. Yeah. Um, and my number one is, it's, I, I think it's, it's a fucking masterpiece. Uh, and I think it stars one of the best actors of our time. Um, a lot of people don't like him. And that actor is Mel Gibson. Because mm. Mel Gibson is fucking awesome. Um, maybe not as a person sometimes, but as an actor, he's, he's fucking awesome. Um, and the movie is The Patriot. Uh, that movie sucks, dude. Now I'm just fucking. I'm just I, fucking with you, dude. I'm now I think from start to finish, The Patriot is a masterpiece, a cinematic masterpiece. Just a great story, Revolutionary War. Great story about a family. Just the battle scenes are great. It even has Heath Ledger in it. Heath Ledger plays Mel Gibson's sons, one of his sons. Just it's a tragic story, but it's a great story, and it's it's our history. So, and I have to stick this as my number one because it's a movie for me that never gets old. Such so awesome, I, I get excited every time I watch the movie. At the end, I get so excited. I just I feel so much pride too. I just love the movie all around. Mel Gibson as an actor, especially in that movie, just shows so much emotion. Um, just one of my favorite scenes is is when he's going in the woods with an axe and he has his younger kids kind of shooting off from the distance. It's just 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 his just his emotions in the movie and just the way he acts in that movie and just the whole movie in general. It's just a great movie. Awesome. I love it. Number one. Yeah. I mean, you- for me, dude. I remember when I, I wasn't even really interested in that movie when it came out because I thought may, I thought maybe it was one of the going to be one of those movies where it was like hyped up and then it just wasn't as good as it as it was supposed to be. And then when I watched it, I was just like, holy shit, man. I mean, it blew me away. That movie blew me away. Obviously, I think because of Heath Ledger, because to me, he was just a phenomenal fucking talent. Like every movie that he was in, he was great and that I've seen personally. And he had the range of anything. I mean, he could go from the sun to the moon. You know what I mean? He, his range was off the charts. And I feel like in that movie, that him is kind of what sucked me in a little bit more because you really feel that uh, that close relationship with their family, but even more so 
with him and his son because it's like his oldest son and and he could fight now he could go to battle and just the, the relationship between them and then obviously mel gibson's like underlying feelings of you know he's fearful for his son i feel like in the movie where you know he he doesn't want his, anything to happen to his son but he understands he has to be a patriot right alongside him and man that mo- that's that movie is that's like a that's a that's a deep fucking movie you know and, they, and like you said the, the the between heath ledger and mel gibson them two just acting together was great like you said like it's so hard because he has you have so much you love your country you, you know and you want you want your boy to go fight for your country what he really wants to do because that's what he wants to do he wants to fight for his country he wants to fight for his people um and it's probably so hard to let to let your boy go do that you know but you want to you you're, you got so much pride you got so much pride and you're so proud of him that you know just Seeing that struggle with Mel Gibson and, and Heath Ledger was great. I, I'm glad you you pointed that out. Um, but yeah, it just even the relationships with his other sons, you know, were great. You know, the the yeah. kind of the middle child, he kind of got like, I don't know. You have to watch the movie, folks. Yeah. Watch the Patriot. Even if you don't like Mel Gibson, he'll blow you away in this movie. Watch it. Yeah, I mean, it, that you're right, because if, if there's any Mel Gibson movie to watch, I mean, there's other ones, too, in my opinion, that you got to see. But if I had to give somebody one, like to try to turn him on to Mel Gibson, you know, show what kind of actor he is, that's the one. That's the one, brother. Fucking the and Patriot. Pe- a lot of people will argue with me. They'll say, well, Braveheart is better than the Patriot, you know, back and forth. But I totally think the pa- I I love Braveheart, but. I can't keep watching Braveheart. I just can't. Dude, you know, I'm gonna... it, it just gets old. It stretches out. And Bra- Patriot is just something I can keep watching. Dude, I, I've never seen Braveheart. Braveheart? <laughs> <laughs> Braveheart. No, dude, I've, I've never seen that, bro. And, and I feel like that's a... Well, um, it's, it's it's definitely something you have to see because it's 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 definitely a, it's a great, great movie. And every and Dude, everybody said, not to cut you off, but everybody says to me, you haven't fucking seen Braveheart, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? That's what yeah, everybody it, says to me. No, it's one of those movies, like I said, you have to see. Um, but, you know, and a lot of people look at me and be like, you think the Patriots better than Braveheart? And I'm like, yeah, it's it's actually a lot better. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. That's my list. Uh, Gonzo, you got the last one. Yeah, and, and, I, and honestly, people, when you watch this, if you've seen Braveheart and the Patriot, fucking write down in the comments. Type it in there. Which one do you think is better? Because I'm curious now. Like, if you think it's better, and I haven't seen Braveheart, but I have seen The Patriot, and I just knowing by what people say about Braveheart, I feel like a lot of people would say to you, like, dude, you fucking nuts. Braveheart's way better. So I'm curious to see what people think. Put it in the comments. I want to know. We both want to know. Um, all right, number one for me. Number one. Uh, to me, dude, this is a movie. Phenomenal fucking movie, dude. It kind of had a, a little bit of hype when it came out. I don't think it was that big in the theaters. Like, like it wasn't like a box office smash. But a lot of people that I knew had have watched the movie and they and they said it's fucking unbelievable. And it turned me on to this guy who's an actor, uh, an iconic actor, but he's a direct. He also directs now, or has directed for years and years. But and from like 2000 to 2012 or whatever, he released a lot of movies that he directed all at one shot. Like. You know, every two years he was coming out with one. And it's Clint Eastwood. He directed this movie. Um, and it stars Sean Penn, Kevin Bacon, and Tim Robbins. And the name of the movie is Mystic River. Um, it also has La- Lawrence Fishburne in it. Um, it, has, it has some other notable actors, too, that I can't really think of their names. But uh, have you ever seen Mystic River? I have. And it, what did you think of it? Did you think it was a good movie? Yeah, I thought it was a great movie. Yeah, I mean, just for people that don't know, it's uh, it's about a guy who his daughter, like, you know, kind of goes missing. Like, she was, they can't get a hold of her. She went out to a party or something, and then, you know, the, he can't get in touch with her, so he's kind of freaking out. They don't know where she is. It's not like her. Um, and then they end up finding her car, like, in a ditch, and she's dead. Um, and the story centers around that guy who's played by Sean Penn, her father and Kevin Bacon is a detective 
on the case. And then Tim Robbins is uh, just a guy that has a lot of issues in his life. That's all I'm going to say. But they're all connected uh, from when they were kids. And that's kind of how the movie starts out. And then as you find, as you go along in the movie, you find out, uh, you know, that everything that's going on and you, and the story unfolds and, you know, you just remember that they, they, all three of them were connected, you know, when they were kids from something that happened, which I'm not going to tell you, you have to see the movie. Um, but it's, it's an unbelievable story. You know, uh, Sean Penn kind of plays like, you know, he's a good father. He owns like a convenience store, but he has no problem with like the gang type of life like you know he's got buddies and and they don't they'll do some shit if they got to do some shit they'll fuck people up if they got to fuck people up uh and kevin bacon's just trying to be a good cop but all three of these guys are affected by what happened when they were kids um and that kind of is intertwined throughout the whole story but i mean it's a great movie and it's it's a mystery you know what i mean like because the whole movie you're trying to figure out who killed the guy's daughter um, and you don't really find out until the end of the movie. So it kind of just drags you along or whatever, but Clint Eastwood, man, that guy is a fucking amazing director, you know? And I know he directed a lot of movies back in the day. And then he, I know he also directed a lot of movies back in the day that he starred in. Uh, but this was the first movie that I ever saw him direct. Um, and he wasn't in it and he's just, I mean, dude, yeah, no, you can it, see why the guy's an icon as an actor and, when you see how he directs movies, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, I mean, that guy knows movies, bro. Like the back of his hand, he fucking knows movies. That's why he needs to keep doing them because he, he does make great movies. And for some reason, you know, mystic river, I, I did, didn't like click into me that Clint Eastwood did that, that movie. Yeah. And, and now and that you, now that you say it, I remember like, cause my own, my mom, I think owned the, owned the VHS or we owned the VHS. And I think it, Clint Eastwood's name was right on top of it. And yeah, I can yeah. picture it right now. Um, great pick, bro. You yeah. know, all the, all, all, all you come, you come up with these movies, a couple of them I didn't see, but I didn't think of them. There's so many fucking movies that. That's what's tough about it. And, and, and on that note, dude, get into your honorable mentions because dude, I had about fucking four when we started this thing. And I think I have like 12 or 13 in my list now. Right. So, Get into yours because I'm curious what, what else you got. All right. Well, I did a lot of honorable mentions last video. I had more than you. I, yeah. I think I named off like 10 or 11 or something like that, a lot of them. Um, so I don't have that many, to be honest with you. Um, but I do have to uh, name a couple. Um, I don't want to leave out any of the Die Hards. Die Hard movie was awesome. Number one was awesome. Uh, growing up, Die Hard 3 was always my favorite. Sam Jackson, Bruce Willis, you know, just that their chemistry together, just – Having to solve all these mysteries around the city was great. Um, also, I have uh, Kingpin. You know, great, great movie. Woody Harrelson, fucking Bill Murray. Yeah, Bill Murray, uh, fuck yeah, Bill Murray. If you haven't seen that movie and you want to fucking laugh your ass off, <laughs> watch, watch Kingpin because it will surprise the hell out of you. So hey. fucking funny, especially so, if you, especially if you like bowling. If you're a bowling fanatic, watch this movie. Um, another movie is The Departed. I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video, but you know, great movie, great, movie. great, great actors, great movie. Jack Nicholson, Matt Damon, Leonardo DiCaprio. You know, um, uh, I got a couple, couple uh, movies. I got to shout out to all the all the '90s kids out there, uh, '80s, '90s kids. Uh, Little Rascals, great movie. Growing up, yep. Little Giants, little football movie. Spike, don't play with girls. Uh, <laughs> Little giants. Yeah, I used to love that. Yeah, yeah the Icebox. You can't forget Mighty Ducks. Yep. Um, you can't forget Rookie of the Year. Uh, you can't forget Major League, speaking of baseball. One you, of the mentioned, best baseball you mentioned that last time. I got one for you. What about Angels in the Outfield? Angels in the Outfield. Dude, I used to love that when I was a kid. And then also, dude, the number one when I was a kid. It was number one. The Sandlot, Oh, bro. Sandlot. Sandlot. I knew we were going to say that. The fucking Sandlot. He can't forget about the Sandlot. Sandlot, nah, like nah. probably uh, the one, the probably the best baseball movie there is. Um, then I gotta call out Bulletproof. I Adam Sandler. Oh, I love uh, that movie. Uh, Damon Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. yeah, Disneyland. We're going to Disneyland. <laughs> great movie. Great comedy. 
it's an Adam Sandler movie that doesn't get enough credit, I don't think. Cause, no, it doesn't. You know, people always think about Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, and shit like that. But Bulletproof is such a funny movie. Uh, check it out. And I think that's it for my – yeah, that's it for my, my list, Gonzo. So it's all you, my friend. Yeah, but dude, Bulletproof, that's a great choice, bro. I remember, like, that was another one, you know, obviously growing up, Billy Madison and then Happy Gilmore. And I, I'm falling in love with Adam Sandler growing up, just like we all were. And we're following the movies as they're coming out. And then Bulletproof came out. And I remember, like, my parents said, like, you can't watch that. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's too bad. You can't watch it. And I'm like, oh, great, you know, because I wanted to see it so bad. But I remember my, uh, my father and my stepmother saying, like, that movie sucked. Like, they watched it and they said it wasn't even funny. They thought it sucked. And then when I finally watched it, I'm like, nah, man, this movie's fucking awesome. It really is. But I could see how – because it's it's not a total comedy like the other ones. It gets serious. You know what I mean? It has a little bit more of a story like that can, that can be more on a serious note. Uh, and I think that's – I think it threw a lot of people off, and that's probably why it doesn't get the credit that it deserves. But I feel like it's it's kind of a cult classic. You know, it's one of those movies where – you know, it might it might not have got the best reviews and people might not have responded to it that great when it first came out. But the older I get, the more I hear about it. You know what I mean? Like the more I hear people bring it up and say it was a funny movie is a great movie. And just they do that pairing. Damon Wayans and Adam Sandler. You can't go wrong with that. The whole the whole ever with the Wayans brothers were making movies. Don't be a menace and all that shit. They're just they were so fucking funny. And then before you go on to your other movies, while we're talking about Adam Sandler, Another movie that I don't think gets enough credit. It's one of his newer movies. Uh, I think it came out around 2012, 2013, something like that. Um, is That's My Boy. Oh, I a, lot of, that. a lot of people don't like his newer movies. And a lot of people don't like this movie. But I think That's My Boy is so funny. Especially if you know where he's like coming from. Like being an 80s guy. Like still living in the past. And just... I fucking love... That's my boy. I don't think it's a movie that an Adam Sandler movie that gets enough credit. But we don't need to stay on Adam Sandler topics or anything like that. So go on, Gonzo. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in a couple of comedies, um, you know, because these are just like great comedies that I love now. I love them growing up. Uh, and actually, the first one I'm gonna name was on my list today originally, but I took it off. I had to. I was like, I can't put this in front of some of these other movies. The first one is Dumb and Dumber. Uh, just because it's one of the funniest movies of all time, and a lot of people think it's stupid, but if you if if you're into that kind of like dumb humor, it's one of the funniest movies of all time. It obviously holds a special place for me just because it's Jim Carrey and because it's directed by the Farrelly brothers, who grew up fucking 15 minutes from where we live. You know what I mean? And I remember when I was a kid, you know, they were filming in Woonsocket and in Providence. You know, right down the road from our house, there's all kinds of parts in Dumb and Dumber that are filmed right near where we live. Yeah, uh, now 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 you're giving the audience clues on where we live now, which is who cares? They're gonna but, come after us, Gonzo. Nah, I, I ain't worried about that. But um, spe but speaking of that, yeah, when the the Farley Brothers, awesome, Dumb and Dumber. I actually thought you were gonna mention Dumb and Dumber in our first video because I know how much you like that movie. Great comedy, awesome. Doesn't get enough credit as it as it should. And yeah, speaking about the Farley Brothers, it reminds me of we were little when Stuck on You. They had the premiere. In the same city we live. Yeah. And they had the red carpet premiere, and we got to meet, like, Johnny Knoxville, Cher. I think Vince Wilfork was there and all that shit. Um, but, yeah, it was they, just cool they mentioned, Dumb and Dumber. They did the uh, red carpet of the Something About Mary at the Stadium Theater, too. Oh, that's right, too. Brett, that's one Brett I, Favre I, was there, Cameron Diaz, Ben Stiller, all of them yeah. were there. We were, we were in the eighth grade that year. Yeah, yeah. And, it did. I mean, there's something about Mary. If you haven't seen that, definitely watch that. Um, but all right, so moving on, another great comedy, and I, I know you've seen this one, Joe Pesci, Marissa Tomei, My Cousin Vinny, great, great comedy. If you haven't seen that, you got to watch that. Joe uh, Pesci. Yeah, dude, great. Um, and then two com – uh, actually, I have three comedies that all star the same guy. Um, and to me, they're some of the greatest comedies of all, of, of all time that have ever come out. Um the first one is Young Frankenstein with Gene Wilder. Have you ever seen that? Yep. Great movie. Great movie. Yeah, Gene um, Wilder's the man. Yeah, it's Come so on. funny. Uh, Good Eats Me Meets Evil. Is that one of them? What is it? 
uh, bad meets evil. No, oh no, no, uh, uh, see, see no evil here. See no, no evil. Yeah, see no evil here. No evil. All right, I love that movie. Uh, Silver Streak. That's my next one, which has oh Richard, with the Martin Pryor. Pryor. No, no, Richard oh, oh. Pryor and Gene Wilder <laughs> in that one. Okay, <laughs> and, and it's like there's like a murder on a train, and they're and they're like going cross country on a train. I didn't see that one. Oh, dude, it's hilarious. If you like see no evil here, no evil, you got to see Silver Street. And then to me, the 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 granddaddy of them all. I mean, I would say it's one of the top five comedies ever made, ever in the history of filmmaking of comedies ever made. Stir Crazy. You've seen that? No. Oh my god, dude, you have to watch that. If you if you like see no evil here, no evil, Silver Street and Stir Crazy, you'll you'll love them. Stir Crazy is with Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor, and they go to jail. And it's, it's oh, the oh, I had I have seen that movie. Yeah, dude, dude it's, hell yeah, it's so funny, dude. It's so I, funny. Th- that movie is hilarious, dude. I, 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 I that shit dude. is good, dude. I can just remember them in their jumpsuits, and don't they try to escape or something? Well, well, they it, they actually they get like wrongfully accused. They they get like the stupid job where they're dressed up in like these chicken costumes. And then two guys go into a bank with like the same, like the similar chicken costumes to rob the bank. And then they get away. And then when the cops show up, they're out on like the street, not knowing what's going on. They don't even realize that like there was a bank robbery and and there they are in their chicken costumes. They get arrested and they're like, what the fuck's going on? We didn't do anything. And dude, that, I mean, it's just so fucking funny. So funny. Um, shit. All right. So then uh, moving on from the comedies, newer movie. Uh, Martin Scorsese with Leonardo DiCaprio again, Wolf of Wall Street. That movie blew me away when I saw it. I, I just fell in love with it right away. Um, the Professional, Leon the Professional. Oh, from back great in the movie. Day with Natalie Portman when she was a little girl. Phenomenal movie. And that was one that really, uh, that Gary Oldman's character in that movie is super like underrated. Like People don't ever like note that as one of his greatest roles, but in my opinion it was. Um, and which is, is uh, saying a big thing when it comes to Gary Oldman because he's such a good actor. Uh, but that's one that you got to see. You know, it's a hitman and, and he takes a little girl into his apartment to like try to save her from her abusive family. And and he teaches her the way of the hitman basically. And it's fucking amazing. Um, a Bronx Tale, great movie. Uh, Robert De Niro, I think that was his first movie I ever directed. Um, but that's a great movie. If you haven't seen that, definitely check out A Bronx Tale. King of New York with Christopher Walken in the 80s. Have you ever seen that? Uh, you got to see that, bro. King of New York, he like he was like a, uh, a hustler and like a drug dealer and kind of like a kingpin. Uh, and he goes to jail and then he gets out of jail and he's basically like, I'm taking back my territory and I'm taking back all the shit that I had before I went to jail. Uh, but, I mean, that has Larry, Lawrence Fishburne in it. Um, I can't remember who else. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson might be in it. I'm not sure, but that's a great fucking movie. Kind of flies under the radar. Um, Gangs of New York with Leonardo DiCaprio and Daniel Day Lewis. Great fucking movie. Uh, Training okay. Day. What's his name too? Uh, uh, one of the Step Brothers. What is in Gangs of New York? One of the, oh uh, oh John C. Riley. Yeah, John C. Riley's yeah. in it. Yeah yeah. Uh, Training Day with Denzel Washington. Great fucking movie. Ethan uh, Hawkins. Yeah, Ethan Hawke. Uh, Man on Fire. Hawkins. <laughs> Hawkins, yeah. <laughs> Man on Fire with Denzel great, Washington. Great movie. Great fucking movie. Um, another one that flies under the radar, directed by Michael Mann, who did Heat, which I fucking fell in love with a couple weeks ago, is Collateral with Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, collateral. It's James with Fox. yeah. Tom Cruise plays a hitman, and Jamie Foxx plays a cab driver. And Tom Cruise like pick, gets in his cab late one night after he just killed somebody, and he's like basically forces him to drive him around to do all his hits that night that he has to do. No, I've never seen it. Oh man, watch it, dude! It's a great movie. Um, but, since, but since you mentioned that, and you just I don't know why it clicked in my head, but fucking Speed is a great movie. I've never seen that. Speed with uh, my uh, fucking Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves, Sandra and, Bullock. Uh, Sandra Bullock, yeah. Is is it uh, uh, Dennis Hopper in it? Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper's in it. Yeah, he's yeah. the bad guy. 
It's also got the dude from uh, Dumb and Dumber, not Jim Carrey, but um, oh Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels in it, yeah. So that's a great movie, and um, I just had another one in my head. See what happens? You you just say one word, and it makes me think of another movie. But, um, but yeah, I, Speed. I, I got one too that just came to my head. I have one more left on my honorable mentions. I kind of saved the best for last. Um, but I got one more that just popped into my head. Falling Down with Michael Douglas. Have you ever seen that? No. Dude. He, he just kind of, he plays a guy that, you know, he's like a business dude, just works his nine to five every day, whatever. And he basically has like a breakdown one day. And he goes completely fucking nuts. Like he, he snaps, he has a breakdown. He goes and buys a bunch of guns. Uh, and there's like one epic fucking scene in the movie where he goes into like a McDonald's or something like that. And, and he wants to get, you know, whatever it is, it's a breakfast sandwich or a hamburger or whatever. And he's like looking up at the menu and he points to the thing on the screen, on the, on the menu, it has the picture and everything. And he's like, I, you know, I want that. They give it to him and it doesn't look like anything like it does in the picture. It's kind of like just a floppy mess of fucking a sandwich and he loses his fucking shit in the restaurant pulls out a gun flipping out on the guy does that fucking look like the sandwich in the picture i you know he just goes fucking nuts but dude that's a great movie that's just kind of like a story of one guy's own demise like how he just loses his mind and uh just basically goes off the walls and Michael Douglas, that's one of his better roles. You know, it's, it's the one that flies under the radar that people don't really know that well, uh, but one of his better roles. But my my last before on- Before you get to your first one, because I know you're saving the best for last, yeah. I'm going to name another one because it rang into my head, and it's one of me and my girl's like favorite movies watching it. And it's not the original, but the remake, Running Scared with Paul Walker. Oh, great, uh, movie. great movie. Yeah, great movie. It's one of those movies that... It's not well known, one of Paul Walker's well known movies because he did all the Fast and Furious and all that shit. But if you haven't seen it, watch it. Yeah, and actually, believe it or not, that's one that ran through my head today. I didn't. And put it, it, up. It, it, it's something like that because the whole, the whole, the, the Russian dude next door, you know, with the whole John Wayne tatted on his mm-hmm. back and the Duke and shit. Just and my dad, I grew up watching John Wayne. You know, Cowboys was like one of my favorites. What watching, watching John Wayne with my dad, and he just. It just reminded me of my dad, like to tat on the back, the Duke, and just just how he walked away, like the ending of the the little cowboys, how he walked away and he turned his back to him, and just great movie, Run Scared. Great movie. Um, all right, so my number my number one for the honorable mentions, and this, uh, I think maybe at close range bumped this one out, and it's like it, this easily this could easily be in my top five from the last video. Uh, 1994, Morgan Freeman and Tim Robbins, Shawshank Redemption. Oof. One of the best fucking movies you'll ever see. One of the best movies you'll ever see, period. I mean... Did, did you not Did you not mention fucking... Uh, did you say Morgan Freeman? Yeah, I said Morgan you Freeman. You did Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Dude, that, honestly... I, I, I did not say that in a, the last video. No, no, you never mentioned it, no. Because it was supposed to be on my list, bro. It's actually supposed to be on my list. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, I fucking love that movie. You you did say it the best for last. Shawshank Redemption is an all-around great movie. If you haven't seen it, if you don't know what it's about, it's just pretty much about a guy escaping from one of the most, the biggest prisons that you, supposedly you can't escape. He does it. Um, Fucking great choice, Ian. Yeah, and 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 let me let me say this too, bro. Is that uh, the movie is not about him escaping from prison? That's what makes it great. Like, yes, it's about that, but again, it's one of those movies, just like Forrest Gump, where it sucks you in. You get lost in that world. The characters are so well defined in the movie. You you learn a little bit with every minute that goes through the movie. You get to know the characters more and more. The story gets deeper and deeper. Um, and and it's one of those movies that really plays on your emotions. You know what I mean? And I, yeah. I, and I, I always put that movie hand in hand with The Green Mile. Because I feel like The Green Mile is similar to that movie in a lot of ways. It is. No, The Green Mile is definitely a great movie. I wouldn't totally put it up there with... No, no, no. I, I don't but... either, but it 
it's like the next one down for me. Like it, for some reason, I kind of handcuffed them together. Shawshank's better, uh, but the Green Mile is is right under it. You know what I mean, dude? That Green Mile movie fucking tears at me every time I watch it. Oh yeah, dude. Fuck oh yeah, me. fucking pieces of shit. So so it <laughs> is my thing because there's at least a couple of movies that I'm like shocked that you didn't name. Are there any movies that you have in your head that you're shocked I didn't name? Because I'm thinking maybe we should think about that, and that could be a show. Movies that that I'm. Well, you, uh, well, you think you you think you can name a movie right now that I forgot? A hundred percent, I can. A hundred percent, I can. I know I can. Because I know, dude, us growing up and being fucking friends. See, that's I, what I'm that's what I'm talking about, dude. Now we're gonna have to do a a, a number three <laughs> video. I I can't get my list right. <laughs> I just can't do it. Because I'm, I'm, I, I, I got too many. I got too many. I'm telling God you. Damn it. I'm telling you right now, dude. This movie, if I named it right now, you might just throw your hands up and be like, "Oh, I'm done. I'm not making any more movie lists." All right, I'm well, serious. Now, well, now you have to say it. You can't just not say it and expect me to go fucking sleep tonight. I don't want. Yeah, but I want it. All right, I'll I'll say it. Just just do one. Go ahead. Young guns. Fucking young guns. <laughs> I told you, man. I know. I dude, you fucking love that movie so much. You always used to want to watch it. You always used to talk about it. And dude. I this whole time that we that after the last video on this one, I'm like, when is he gonna say young guns? When is he gonna say young guns? Dude, you know me you know me better than I know myself. I know what that's one of your I, that's one of your all time <laughs> favorite movies, both of them. Young guns one and two. Dude, Young Guns, fucking Blaze of Glory. I, I, that's my number one, folks. Young Guns. It just, it's just, it's just who I am. I just, I just ask him. He, he's known me since I was just a little lad. I loved Young Guns. I still love it. Uh, just the whole cast between Kiefer Sullivan, um, fucking Corey, Corey Feldman, Corey Haim. Co no, Corey Feldman, Corey Haim are not in the movie. They're not in Kiefer, that. Kiefer Sullivan. Uh, D uh, Diamond, the, the, the Indian oh, guy. Oh, yeah, that's right. Lou Diamond Phillips. Lou Diamond Phillips. Then you got um, – uh, 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 why, why can't I think of his name right McConaughey now? McConaughey uh, is Matthew McConaughey. No, not, not – you're fucking me up now, Gonzo. Not Matthew McConaughey. Um, uh, 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 Charlie Sheen's brother. You know, fucking – Oh, Emilio Estevez. Yeah, Billy the Kid, Emilio Estevez. What the fuck is wrong with me? Emilio Estevez, um, Emilio Estevez Charlie Sheen was even in it. Kiefer Sullivan, uh, just a great cast. Uh, the second one, I think it had a couple new guys. I can't think of their name. The guy was in Broken Arrow. Um, what's the dude's name in Broken Arrow? Christian Arrow. Slater. Christian Slater was in the second one. Um, just Young Guns, great movie. Just story of a Billy Kid and I guess his, 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 his gangsters. Yeah, yeah, his homies. Just, just a great movie. Uh, speaking about Charlie Sheen and Amelia Westervez, uh, Men at Work, fucking, fucking uh, great movie. See what happens. Movie. You you name one one actor, and we can just name movies. Um, just fucking Young Guns, man. I can't believe I forgot that. The only movie that I can think of that maybe you forgot, but I mentioned the last video was The Crow, just because you know you, you were into The Crow a lot. But yeah, honestly, and I, I kind of did forget that, but you mentioned it last time, so I was, yeah, I, I so, remembered it then. And if, if you folks don't know, if, if, if you want to know, and you're wrestling fans, we should put this in one of our wrestling videos. Me and Gonzo definitely have a theory on The Crow and Jeff Hardy. We definitely think that's where he got this Swanton Bomb inspiration from. Yeah, yeah, it, for sure. You know, when he, when he first killed the first guy, and then he go well, before he kills him, he falls off the building into a bunch of uh, trash bags and garbage cans, and he does the straight Swanton Bomb. Yeah, and I think and I think a documentary that me and you either either watched or read. I forgot. Jeff Hardy did mention Crow is one of his favorite movies, so um, we really do think we're onto something there. That yeah, he, yeah, that definitely inspired the Swan Tom Bomb. Yeah, and so that, I mean that's a reason. If you're a wrestling fan, that's a reason to watch the Crow right there because yes. if you like the Jeff Hardy, you like the Hardy Boys back in the day. I'm telling you, I think that's because I remember when I watched that movie, I'm like, yeah, it's the Swan Tom Bomb. He did the crow just did the Swanton Bomb, bro. And fucking, you know what's one of the greatest movies too? TLC. <laughs> <Taylor> T <laughs> <Taylor> <laughs> <Taylor> <laughs> yeah, dude, I used to love that back in the day. 
it's the not, home video? Yeah, it's not a movie, folks. It's just a bunch of wrestling matches and legs, tables, ladders, and chairs. Um, but speaking of that, then you got to think about fucking uh, the rundown with The Rock and Sean. That's Ray a good one. Great, great movie. And then you got to think of the Rowdy Rowdy Piper movie uh, when he was he puts the glasses on. Oh, dude, dude, uh, they live. They live. Oh, so good. Such All these a- fucking movies, and then you get into the the stupid movies. You get into Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The Toxic Avenger. Toxic Avenger, the Gremlins, uh, the little creatures that rolled around everywhere. Critters. Critters. Um, all those stupid Mac and me. Fucking all those stupid. Yeah, crit- that's that's why, dude, the next movie one that we do, we're just giving it a genre. So, so we're, it could be because that's how, that's how we're going to be able to not forget so many movies. If we're only thinking about a horror movie or we're only thinking about a comedy – we're still going to forget movies, but we have a better shot of nailing the list, I feel like, as opposed to just, like, top five. You know, because that's, right, yeah. that's the hardest one. Top five, top ten, top fifty, top one hundred. Those are the hardest ones to do because every movie affects you in a different way. And every movie holds a certain piece of sentimental, sentimental value to you and has, like, a special place in your fucking chemistry, in your DNA. So and when you're a movie lover like you and me are, it's so hard to because movies just affect us in so many ways, you know, especially considering that we lo- love filmmaking and stuff like that. It's like, you know, it might not be like part of the story that affects us about a movie. It just might be the way that they shot it or, you know, the way that it was written or the, the script, the dialogue it could be anything. Exactly. Um, you might you might you might laugh at some of our picks, you know, but you're not us. You're not, you don't feel what we felt when we watched that movie, you know? So that's why we picked what we picked. Yeah. And but, it, but no right. doubt about it. We, we have to slim these down. I mean, this has got to be, cause this is so hard and it's even just thinking about genres is even hard. I mean, how do you, but we'll get into that action movies, comic book movies, comedies, yeah. dramas, yeah. You know, sci-fi movies. We'll get all, all into that, and that should be way easier. And uh, yeah, so we'll definitely, and they definitely won't be no hour-long videos for you guys. Yeah, just, yeah. This so. one, this one, we just kept going and going, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this thing up now because I'm fucking starving. Um, so yeah, let us know what you guys think as far as your top movies. We got some comments on the last video. We want more comments. We want to know because we're always looking for new movies to watch, things that we haven't heard of. Uh, And please hit the fucking red bell. Hit the subscribe button. Hook your boys up. We're trying to build the channel. You guys know the deal. Splatman, what do you want to leave them with? I just want to say these two lists that we, these past two videos that we did, the list of our favorite movies was so hard. And I hope you respect that what we do. And I hope you, res- you like our movies and I hope you, you learned a lot from our, our, our videos. And I hope that you, you watch some of these videos that we're, we were these movies that we're recommending to you because, um, some of these, they deserve to be watched, you know? All. So they, they, yeah, they all do. So, you know, if you have to make your own list on which movies you have to watch, like I have, do it. So, because uh, movies are great pastime, and it's it's just they're awesome. They make you feel a whole bunch of ways. But yeah, it's been long enough, Gonzo. So, Spot Man's got to check out here. So, yeah. I I love you, people. Thank you for watching. Do what Gonzo said. Like, share, and comment. Yep. Peace. Yep. Gonzo Sharks checking out. Till next time. Thanks for watching. AWO show. For life, baby. For life.